sorter up here, which sorts them to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. And the way it does that... You're sorting them for size? Yeah. Okay. Based on length. Uh, there's an infrared camera uh, right up there, which will actually take a picture of every single fish that goes down. Oh my gosh. And that's displayed right here. So depending on the size, it goes to whatever line I have set up. Those are all different sizes right now. Oh my gosh. Um, the more uniform the fish, as far as the population goes, the easier it is to set, every, set everything up and then the easier they run. Uh -huh. um, so that's displayed right here on the growth curve. Okay. You get a nice little growth curve. The hatchery staff loves that when I show up and I can show them, hey, this is how big your fish are. Okay. Because it's hard for them to get engaged on it out there. You know, they do. They do their sampling and stuff like that, but I can tell them the size of every single fish they oh have gosh, in, the, wow. in the pond, you know? Yeah. So, um, from, once they get sorted, they go to each respective line, depending on the size. We'll probably want to go to three, so it's going to run out of wire soon. Um, so they're positive up top here, where they can swim around, and then they choose to go down one at a time down the channel. Oh, wow. So right now all I'm doing is coat and wire tagging, so I'm not adipose clipping the fish because they've already been clipped by the hand trailer. Um, so these poor fish have to go through it twice. <laughs> um, so they come down one at a time and they hit a head mold right in here. Uh, nothing's falling right now, there they go. And as soon as they hit the head mold, Cause those clamps inside to clamp down on the fish and hold it in place so it's not wiggling around. And there's a needle inside right here, which will actually inject the tag into the snout of the fish uh -huh. once it's clamped down. Wow. Now, for us as scientists, it's important that we get that tag right in the, the snout mm -hmm. because there's there's a little fatty pocket in there with adipose tissue. And if that in its head? Yeah. If that tag doesn't get in the snout, in that in that pocket, it'll fall out. It'll shed. If it's too deep, it'll cause nerve, cause nerve damage. Oh, I should have realized this a long time ago, that adipose is the name of a type of fat. Right. And that's yep. why it's called adipose fin. Yep. So there could be adipose tissue yep. in its head. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think, you know, I've read about it a little bit, but it's essentially there to protect the brain so it can swim into stuff oh. and it doesn't get brain damage. So it's a little, <laughs> little fatty pocket right there. Huh. This and kind of doing like three things at once all the time. survival rate. So we get mm -hmm. a certain percentage back to the hatchery and they 
certain groups where we do like where we won't tag some and we will tag some. Uh -huh. So then we can figure out just proportionally how many tags are out there that we didn't recover. Uh huh. Okay. And then what is the return? I guess it varies by species. And is it this coho? Yep, it varies by species and it varies by facility as well. Yeah. Um, closer to the ocean, usually the better survival. Yeah. Uh, but not necessarily now because the Columbia River fisheries are doing so well uh, that their returns, you're seeing upriver rights at Lions Ferry returning at 2% now. And mm -hmm. that's all the way up the Snake River. So oh, okay. They're going that far and they're still returning at a 2% rate. It's pretty mm -hmm. amazing. Um, and now I say they, that's Chinook, they're doing a longer trek up to Columbia. But okay. These coho, these coho actually have a really good return rate here at Washington. Mm-hmm. They're nice fish. 